Hey guys, Buffering Game back today. Bring you a video for our favorite weapon series for our Tactical Weapons Part 6. So I'll link the other previous parts 1 through 5 in a playlist below. Now the point of this series here, we are with Part 6 at the end of Season 6. And the point of this series is to focus on tactical looking weapons that can actually be used uh, viably in Warzone, specifically against the current meta. So the current meta here at the end of Season 6... Uh, season 6 has been extended for another, I believe it's 8 to 9 days here, at, uh, right before the content drops with the with the Cold War integration. So I believe December 8th is when Season 6 now ends. But we're at a point where everything's pretty stale. The Kilo 141 seems to be dominating for the assault rifles. The MP5 still dominant for the submachine guns, as well as the shotgun being the R90 with the Dragon's Breath Brown. Seems to be something we're seeing a lot of. So those are really the three weapons that dominate the game right now, I'd say. Probably about 140 of 150 players in any given Warzone match are probably using one of those three guns, if not more, if not two of three. So the point of this series, we're going to go over weapons that are tactical, IRL builds that can be used effectively and viably in a Warzone match to combat meta weapons. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, with part four or part five of the series, the last part, we left off with the P90. So I'll link that down below, as I said, in a playlist. Now, here we go. We're going to be covering the AS Val would be the first one. So this is one we haven't covered yet. This was released here in Season 6, um, one of the new weapons for Season 6. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'll go over the pros and cons for a lot of the attachments on the first weapon, and I won't really repeat them on the other ones, otherwise the video is going to take too long. So what we'll do is we'll strip this down. Now, the AS Val is a unique weapon. There's some different attachments here. This is actually integrated suppressed. We've gone over this build quite a bit for the weapon convergence series. But for the barrel, we're going to want the VLK 200mm OSA barrel. So the barrel itself at base is a 200mm, it seems. This is just going to give it a heavier monolithic integrally suppressed suppressor built into the weapon. So it's still integrally suppressed, but it's a heavier monolithic suppressor. The pros here are going to be the damage at range you're going to get, an increase there, as well as the bullet velocity, which is going to be very helpful with this weapon, since it is mainly a close quarters weapon. So the cons here are going to be the ADS speed. We'll go ahead and select that. Now the laser, since it is mainly a CQC close quarters combat weapon, we're going to want the 5 milliwatt laser. This is going to help us with the hip fire accuracy for this weapon as well as the sprint to fire speed. The cons here are going to be the laser is going to be visible to enemies, but only if you're not ADSing. So if you're moving and ADSing, the laser won't be visible, but if you're walking, holding your weapon at your side, it will be visible. So just keep that in mind. Now the optic, this is personal preference. I tend to go with a holographic and EOTech. This is going to give you a precision sight picture as well as a 1.5 or a 1.3 to 1.5 times magnification for this optic. Now the cons here are going to be the ADS speed, so just keep that in mind. But mainly you're not using this to ADS. You're going to be mainly using this for hip fire, um, the ADS when you need to. But it's not going to slow you down much. I believe it's about half a frame. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now we go to the stock. I'm actually going to leave this one blank because we already have three attachments here. We're going to skip some of these and we're going to go to the ammunition. At base, we come with 20 rounds of the 9x39. So we're going to want a 30 round of 9x39. Give us that 10 extra rounds. It's going to increase our magazine capacity. The cons are going to be the ADS speed and the movement speed with those extra large 9x39 rounds. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then for the underbarrel, we're going to want the Merc fork up. This is going to give us the recoil control as well as the hip fire accuracy to go along with that 5 milliwatt laser that we're using. The cons here are going to be the aim, walk, aim, movement speed, and the ADS speed. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now, there's some things you could do if you don't want an optic. You can deselect the optic, and you can go with the VLK Strelux stock. This is going to help with the recoil control and the aim instability, as well as the aim, walk, and steadiness. The cons are going to be the aim, walk, and movement speed, and the ADS speed. So you can definitely do that if you're used to the iron sights on this weapon. However, personally, I just prefer to run it with an EOTech because I'm used to using this in other games like Battlefield, and this is typically how I run it. So for me, this is a, how I'm most accurate with the weapon. But this is our final design. This is the AS Val 9x39mm assault rifle. Integrally suppressed. Very, very good for hip fire, CQC, clearing out buildings. It actually, I believe it still is the fastest TTK, TTK weapon in the game, even in Warzone, when you're in those right ranges. Primarily, you don't want to be engaged in regular AR ranges. This is more so a close let's say within 30 meters max really really want to be engaging with this weapon so that's the ASV. let's go ahead and we'll jump next up the sr25 so if you guys have been fans of the channel for a while you're very familiar with this build this is one that i haven't really been using too much lately however i really um, am starting to get back into it so let's go ahead and strip this down first off 
I'm going to skip the muzzle for this part, but this is going to be, I'll show you where it's personal preference. So the key attachment here, you're going to want the Corvus Custom Marksman. This is going to give you the damage at range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control for pros. The cons are going to be the aim down sight speed as well as the movement speed. So we'll go ahead and select that. Skip the laser. We're going to go with the optic. We're going to want that variable zoom optic. This is going to allow us to toggle from 3 to 6.1. And the cons here are just the ADS speeds since we're adding a heavier optic on the weapon. Now the stock, again, this is one of those personal preference ones. We're going to go with the M16 stock. It's going to give us more in line with, with an M110 or an SR25. It's going to give us the aiming stability as a pro. The con is going to be the aim, walk, and movement speed. So we'll select that. Now we're going to go down to the ammunition. This is going to be a key attachment here. We're going to want the 458 SOCOM rounds. The pros here are going to be damage and range. The cons are going to be the fire rate, recoil control, and magazine ammo capacity. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then the final attachment here, you're going to want the commando foregrip. I think this is best since you're going to be, typically you want to select fire to single fire. You do not want to full out of this. And you want to do pros here are going to be the recoil stabilization and the aiming stability. The cons are going to be the movement speed. So this weapon you want to toggle, it'll come in full auto at base. You want to toggle it to single fire or select fire and tap fire this like a DMR. This is a DMR build, not an AR build. Um, and it definitely is very, very effective at those medium range, medium to longer range engagements. I'd say out to probably 60, 60 meters, if not more, 60 to probably 80 is really where you wanna be engaging with this. However, it can stretch out to longer sniper ranges if you really needed to, but the damage is gonna drop off at that point. But those medium longer engagements, it's gonna crush. now. One of the options here, since you're running wars and you probably do want it suppressed, so you can just swap out the M16 stock and go with the base salt mod stock. And we'll go ahead and throw the monolithic suppressor on there. That's going to give us the sound suppression as well as the damage at range. The cons here are going to be the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. So that's our Knight's Armament SR25 build, which I've been using this game since the beginning of Warzone, and it's definitely very, very effective. It has its place still in this game and will put people down very quickly. So that's our SR25, we'll back out and we'll go with our AKMN. So at this one, we're gonna use at base, I'm using the Warsaw Blueprint. Now since the T-Moda Blueprint just came out, you can definitely use that as well. We're gonna use some parts for that though. I'm gonna use the Warsaw at blank because we have the all the black pistol grips and everything. You can also use um, the steel curtain as well. So for this one, for the muzzle, I'm gonna go with the monolithic suppressor or the PBS-4. This is a Russian suppressor. This is gonna give us the sound suppression and damage at range for pros. The cons are going to be the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now the barrel, we're going to go ahead and do the 23 inch Romanian barrel. This is going to give us the pros being damage at range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. The cons are going to be the ADS speed and the movement speed for this weapon. So there's uh, there's definitely one thing that's a that's a good thing here is the blueprints that we have. The, if we go with the Resonat, this was part of the Halloween bundles. So the Resonat Blueprint is going to give us almost more of a, uh, almost kind of something similar, similarly shaped to a modernized uh, handguard and for this weapon. So we go ahead and select that. If you can get over the, uh, the orange wires there, I think overall, especially from the other side of the right side of the weapon, it looks pretty nice, which we'll see. Now for the optic, again, this is personal preference for anybody. I'm going to go with the APX-5 on this. I'm really used to this one from the Battlefield 3 and 4 series. This is the one I would always use on my AKs. This is going to give you precision sight picture as well as the cons being the aim down sight speed. However, a lot of options here are very viable. The the aim point is really good, as well as something like an uh, integral hybrid or a Leopold hammer, or even a VLK is also very, very effective with this weapon. So we'll go ahead and do the APX-5. Now the stock, we're gonna go with the FFS close quarter stock. This is gonna help us with the ADS speed. The con here is gonna be the aiming stability. And since we do have that Team Hoda blueprint, we're gonna go ahead and select that. That'll give us that same stock that we see on the M4s, this is meant to really, in my mind, mimic the AK-12 stocks. Um, so this is a nice addition with the blueprint, the Team Hoda, which just came out, I believe, last week. So you go ahead and select that. And then finally, this is really personal preference. You can definitely go for a TAC laser if you want to. That's going to give you the aim down sight speed, aim stability, and aim walking steadiness. Just got to be careful. Your laser will be visible when you're ADSing. Really depends on what game mode. You go with the TAC laser or go with a 40-round magazine of the 7.62x39, I'm going to go with the, the Tim Hoda again. That gives us a nice 40-round magazine. That's going to increase our ammo from 30 by 7.62x39 to 40 rounds. So we're going to increase the magazine capacity by 10 rounds. The cons are the ADS speed and the movement speed. Since we're adding those extra 
heavy attachments. Whenever we look at this AKMN right here, you can see from the right side of the weapon, it actually looks really, really nice. Um, that's a nice looking AK right there. Very, very aesthetically pleasing. Looks really good. Um, just if you can look past these wires here, which really don't look too bad. Um, I'm kind of used to them at this point, but this is a nice looking AK. This is really probably the closest to the most modernized AK we'll be able to get here in game, which is actually really nice. I do enjoy using this, and this is actually a really, really good assault rifle that really no one I see, I really never see anybody use an AK. So that will definitely put people down. That's a very good option here in game. Next up, we're gonna go with the M82 with a 25 millimeter round. So this is a very interesting uh, weapon that I've used a lot. And this is mainly for against, I would say, this is mainly anti-material, so you wanna use it against vehicles. As well, it's very effective against infantry. I have some gameplay on the channel. If we look at the barrels, we're going to go ahead and do the XRK Harbinger. This is going to give us the best recoil control there. You can see on the bottom graph, the best recoil control for the weapon. And the cons are the bullet velocity, ADS speed, and the movement speed. But since we're not using this as your typical sniper rifle, that's fine. Now we're going to want for the laser, we can go ahead and do attack laser. That'll give us the aim, aim down such speed, aim stability, and walking steadiness. Cons of being the laser will be visible to the enemies. And then for the optic, we're going to go with the base sniper scope since we're not using this for long, long range engagements. We're going to go with the base sniper scope, which I believe is around eight times, seven to eight times magnification versus the variable. Now for the ammunition, we're going to want the 25 by 59 millimeter explosive rounds. So this is going to get past. It's a low yield payload capable of dismemberment, but it also will go past trophy systems. So that's why I say this is mainly anti-material material and anti-vehicle. So you, the anti-vehicle, because you can get past the trophy systems. Trophy systems will not stop this. So typically, if I'm running in games and, and it's a night where we're getting vehicle spam, I'm going to run this and just take out vehicles very easily. So you get spokes of impact and damage for the pros, the cons being the bullet velocity, recoil control, and the fire rate. So we'll go ahead and select that. We're also going to want to put on the bipod. This is going to give us the crouch and recoil prone control, or excuse me, the, the crouch and prone recoil control. So this will help us control that even more if we're crouch or laying down. And then finally, the last one, again, personal preference, but I wanna get as much recoil control as I can out of this. We'll go with the rubberized grip tape to give us more recoil control and the cons of the aiming stability. So we'll select that. And that is our M82, our bare M82 with the 25 millimeter explosive rounds on here, which is just a beast. And then, like I said, it's really great against vehicles, but especially you, if you can hit infantry with this, what it does is it slows them down. It almost gives them like a stun effect. If you hit hit them, it's gonna break armor, but if you hit at their feet or somewhere very close within the vicinity for splash damage, it's gonna slow them down with a stun type effect and they will start moving very slowly. So this is very, very effective in certain situations. And just keep in mind, it is not we're not suppressing it with this barrel. This barrel here gives us we don't have the ability to select a muzzle on this because it has the built-in compensator slash muzzle brake there. So just keep in mind, you will show up on the mini map. However, this thing is, I, in my mind, worth it. I've had a lot of successful games with this one. So that's a really good one. I recommend using that. We'll go ahead and back out. And last but not least is going to be the SKS. So this is one that I've been playing around a little bit more lately, and I'll do a specific video on this. But the SKS actually with this particular setup, is pretty pretty beast of a DMR. So we'll go ahead and strip this down. Now, at first I didn't like the SKS back when it came out, but now I'm beginning to appreciate it a little bit more for what it's if you use it correctly. First attachment, we're gonna want the mono suppressor. It's gonna give us the sound suppression, damage at range, cons, ADS speed, and aiming stability. Aim market steadiness, excuse me. The barrel, we're gonna obviously want the longest one. So that's gonna be one of those ones that will give us the damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. And you can see the cons there. We'll go ahead and select that. Now we're also gonna want a tack laser. Go ahead and put that on. And then for the optic, instead of a variable uh, variable zoom, which will only get us, if we look at the variable, it'll go up to eight. So that that's, looks very nice. However, I think the PU scope here gives us seven times optic, but it has a much clearer sight picture on it. It's more open optic. You can see more of your surroundings with it and it's nice and precise. So I'm gonna give us the PU scope, Give us a seven, seven times zoom, the cons being the ADS speed, but again, not as bad as the variable zoom. So we'll select that. And you can see you do have different frankness with the options here, so we can get one that takes the utility tool, will give us the camouflage on there, which is nice too. Stock, we'll go ahead and leave blank, as well as the perk and the ammo, and then the underbarrel workers are gonna want a Merc foregrip. This will help us, since this is a 7.62 by 39 rifle, same with the AK, these heavier, uh, and these heavier caliber weapons, uh, like mainly the Russian weapons, 
will have best recoil control with the Merc foregrip. So this will give us the recoil control and hip fire accuracy, which we're not really concerned with that. We just want the vertical recoil control. The cons are gonna be the aim walk and movement speed and the aim down sight speed. So we'll select that. And then you can see I just have a Spetsnaz fall type cam on here with the canopy and that looks really nice. And if we go ahead and look, here is our SKS. So very, not too, not too bad looking. It's a little bit more modernized than obviously like the wooden stock ones. Very nice, and again, this is our SKS. Really, really good at those medium, again, same same type of uh, engagements as we did with the SR25. Very good at the medium to long range engagements. Just keep in mind, this does take sniper ammo, so be careful and conserve your ammo with that. But that is our Fivent Weapon Series Tactical Builds Part 6. I'll link the rest below in a playlist. Let me know what you guys think of these particular weapons that we just built here. If, they're, if you've used any of these in game, if they're viable against meta weapons, in my opinion, they are. You just obviously want to pick your engagements, make sure you're on cover with a lot of these weapons, especially something like an AK. It's going to hit very, very hard. Um, you just got to be careful right now with the kilos. Are, they have the perfect rate of fire, so it's very easy to control that recoil at very extended ranges. So you, if you get caught against a squad full of kilos, it's very hard. However, some of these, if you can master how to use them, I think are going to close the gap within how good the kilo is. So let me know down below what you guys think of this. This is the Tactical Weapons Build Part 6. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming. Out.